Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video, uh, using uh, IBM's SPSS statistics, uh, is going to deal with how to calculate the strength of association, or how to calculate a correlation uh, between a nominal variable and a scaled variable, or a variable that's measured at the interval or ratio scale of measurement. Okay? I suppose what's important here is that when we're doing these particular calculations, okay, in SPSS and when we're calculating correlation coefficients, there is a way that we can do it straight by just actually going to analyze, okay, and choosing correlate and bivariate, okay. But unfortunately, uh, this particular calculation here allows us to calculate what's known as the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. Uh, and the Spearman rank correlation coefficient and this Kendall's tau. What we're actually going to deal with is, is we're going to calculate what's known as uh, eta squared or more importantly uh, the eta test statistic which is an appropriate test statistic when you have a nominal variable okay, and when you have an interval stroke uh, ratio variable that's a variable measured on the scale level. Okay? But unfortunately we don't go into analyze correlate bivariate to actually calculate that particular correlation. We have to do it a different way, okay? But before I do that, let's just maybe describe the data that we're dealing with here. We've got two variables. We have a gender variable and we have an exam grade variable. The gender variable has two levels of measurement, okay? We have males and we also have females. And the exam grade variable, so that's our nominal variable, okay? And our exam grade variable is just a continuous variable uh, that measures, uh, that's a measurement of an individual's exam grade, okay? So it's measured at the interval stroke ratio level of measurement. Uh, so it's in, within SPSS, it's defined to be a scale variable. If I look at the variable view window here, you can see that I have gender specified uh, as a particular variable. The values are zero indicates female and one indicates male. And it's specified to be a nominal measured variable. Uh, exam grade, I have it down as two decimal places and that's specified to be a scale variable. Okay? So these two types of variables are appropriate when we're, when we're calculating uh, this measure, this eta measure, okay, which is a measure of association between a nominal and an interval uh, variable. Okay, so to do the calculation, well, let's actually just draw a graph for us of the relationship between gender and exam grade. Yeah, just so that we can actually see what's going on. So when I go to graphs, legacy dialogues, let's do a scatter dot plot. Okay, and let's put in our two variables, simple scatter. Let's put gender in on the x-axis. Gender is my independent variable. Okay, and I believe that exam grade is dependent on gender, so that's going to be on my y-axis. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit OK here. And what we get is we get a scatter plot of the relationship between uh, gender levels and exam grade. Okay? You can sort of see that for level zero here, okay, which are the females, okay, uh, that their exam grades seem to, well, they definitely go up to a, a higher value, a larger value here, okay, a greater value. Okay? Uh, but there is crossover between the exam grades here of the females and the exam grades of the males. Double click it on the chart, we could put a line of best fit on it. Just put a line of best fit on the data. Okay, uh, we actually have an association that seems to be negative. Now it's important in this case here that we actually don't, that we, I suppose that we don't take the sign of the measurement of the association into consideration, whether it's positive or negative, because we could flip the males in this direction and the females in this direction, in which case the slope would go up as a positive slope. But you can see that just like from a descriptive perspective and looking at the output here from our scatter plot. We have an R squared value, uh, a linear R squared value is equal to 0 0.35. Uh, that's got that's that's got from I suppose the Pearson correlation coefficient. Yeah. Okay? If I actually get the square root of that, that'll give me the R value, which is the Pearson value. So let me get the square root of 0.357. Actually, the square root of 0.3, the square root. 0.357 and the square root of that is about 0.597. So from a correlation of Pearson perspective, there seems to be a moderate association between between levels of gender exam scores on le across levels of gender. Okay, but because this is a nominal variable, we cannot rely upon the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient because that requires us to have two continuous variables. Okay doesn't allow us to deal with nominal variables. So what I'd like to calculate is eta squared, or actually more importantly, I'd like to calculate the eta value, okay? Uh, that'll be the, the measure of association between this nominal variable gender and exam grade. And to do that, it's actually straightforward. It's just that it's hidden away within SPSS. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna to go to analyze. I'm gonna to go to descriptive statistics. 
and I'm actually going to go to cross tabs okay so I'm going to click on cross tabs uh, I'm going to put gender in the rows and exam grade in the columns it doesn't actually matter which way we put them in here okay and the statistics that I'm going to ask for I'm going to click on statistics and I'm going to choose nominal by interval in other words I'm going to ask for the eta statistic okay so I'm going to hit continue on that now, there'll be a lot of output because there's uh, cross tabs, cross tables being produced here, but we're not interested in that. We're interested in a specific value that's going to come out for ETA. Okay? So I'm going to hit OK on that, and we get our output. Case summary table here. Uh, we have, I suppose, gender and gender, the two levels, females and males, and we actually have all of the all of the scores across here from our dependent variable perspective. We're going to ignore that table. It's not really making much sense here 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 for us. But really, what's important here is this: is the directional measures, yeah, nominal by interval, and it's actually the eta measure. It actually gives us two eta measures. It gives us when gender is considered to be the dependent variable. Okay, uh, it's one, and when exam grade is being considered to be the dependent variable. Actually, that's what we're interested in. We're interested in gender being independent and exam grade being dependent, yeah? So in which case, the eta, the measure of association, or the eta statistic, is being reported as 0.597, okay? Actually, if I square that to get the, uh, the coefficient of determination, uh, so we have 0.597 squared, that gives us a value of 0.35. So about 35% of the variance in exam grade can be accounted for uh, by genders, yeah, across the gender values, yeah, across the gender levels, yeah. Okay. But really what was important for us, this is a this where we are doing a correlation video here, okay. Uh, we're interested in this 0.597. Uh, so that's my eta value. So 0.597 would be an indication of a moderate, moderately strengthened association between between gender and exam grade. Okay, guys, uh, once again, this was Jonathan Lambert of the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I hope this, this particular video detailing, uh, detailing how to calculate a, a, a measure of association stroke correlation between a nominal scaled variable uh, and an interval, uh, an interval scaled variable, I hope this was helpful. So once again, thanks for your time.